this way. Can I put it out? No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm very afraid of uh, fire. Cheeky <laughs> This is my roller. There's not a nicer stuff than that one. There's not when you want to come here. I'd like to have a nice backdrop behind me. So if I get boring, at least the people can look at something. There might even be a something. Now ask me a question, let me finish the answer. Stop interrupting me. Go on. This is always the same with Flash and MTV and all these hip happening programs. So you're hip and happening? I don't know, no, I've never been hip and happening. I've never thought of myself as hip and happening, but if you want to say I'm hip and happening, then I'll take it. If Herbie tells you you're hip and happening, you're hip and happening. Thank you, Herbie. I take it. Who's Grey Owl? Who's Grey Owl? Grey Owl was a man who lived in the 30s. He uh, was an Ojibwe Indian. He was a great man in many respects. He stood up for the environment. He was a conservationist. He was a man ahead of his time. He was an author. On his deathbed, they found out he was an Englishman. His name was Archibald Stansfield Bellaney. He invented himself. I, I mean, he created a whole life for himself. He wanted to be an Indian. He uh, grew up with these two English aunts in uh, Hastings, which is a little kind of seaside town off the south coast of England. And he dreamt about being an Indian, and he became an Indian. He came here to Canada, and uh, he grew his hair and he learned the Indian ways and he became a great trapper. He was a wonderful kind of character in that respects. And he had a number of wives and then one day he met a young Mohawk girl called Pony and he fell for her and she fell for him. She was, he was like her Jesse James. That's what she wrote about him. There's this tall kind of willowy figure with the cowboy hat and everything. And they, they struck up a life together and um, she didn't like trapping and she made him stop trapping and made him kind of write and all helped him to write and he wrote these beautiful books and he became famous and he went on the road and by then the kind of the facade that he had created for himself became real and he couldn't find a way out of it and he went to england and he toured and he was like a rock star of his time. I mean, you got to think back to the 1930s and in England and stuff like this, the Indian, the savage, the noble, Hiawatha. Suddenly this man came from the wilds, from the wilderness, in buckskin, in the war bonnet, and talked about the wilderness and how, you know, the white man has come in and taken the land and taken the forests and everything. And he believed it, and people bought it. But and do you um, have the same values as Grail? Well, I have a concern for this planet. I have a concern for this world that I live in. I have children, and I see a great deal of devastation. I see a great deal of uh, good work on many people's behalf, but, uh, you know, we're losing our forests at a great rate. I mean, look at the weather this year here. In, you know, in Canada, I mean, in Montreal, the, the ice storms. You heard about the ice storms? Yeah, I heard about the ice storms. I have friends up in Montreal. I lost my own house to the El Nino back in Malibu. The rains took it away. Uh, so the weather is, is really screwed here, and we ain't doing anything to help it. And today the weather is good? No, the weather was bad today. Oh, I like this smoke, everything. Um, no, the weather. We, we The weather's been very good for us on this film. I must say, we've been blessed. I think the, the spirit of Archie Grey Owl has been with us. And, um, and people are saying it's not dancing with wolves, it's dancing with the beavers. <laughs> Isn't that true? Oh, that's good though, I like that. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah, he... I mean, the beavers at his time in his life were almost extinct. They were almost wiped out. And uh, he was a man who kind of put them back on the map and made people aware that if you lose the beaver, you lose a certain kind of link in the chain of, uh, of the wilderness. I mean, Would you have done the movie if it wasn't Sir Richard Attenborough behind it? Um, that's a good question. Well, if the script had come in, the script that I've got right now, I would have done this movie, yes. But Richard is the icing on the cake. I mean, Richard, to stand on a set with this man is just triumphant. King Richard.
Lord Anborough. Yeah, he's, he's a great man. He's a lovely man. He's a wonderful human being. He kind of gives you the space and the, the place and the confidence more than anything else. As an actor, you know, an acting is just about confidence and having the chutzpah to be able to stand up there in front of 80 people that you don't know and say, I'm Archie Greyhound, or say, I'm James Bond, or whatever. And it takes, you know, it takes courage to stand up there and act. Yeah, you said it took you two James Bond movies to have actual the confidence of playing James Bond. You know what I mean? Sure. So do you uh, have the confidence of playing someone that already lived, you know? You mean Archie? Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. I've, I'm very close to him. I mean, after GoldenEye happened, um, Richard offered me this job. I read the script, I fell in love with it. I said, look, I'll pay you to go and do the movie, uh, to, for me to be in it. But how do you choose your role? Because you, we can see you in Mars Attack, yeah. we can see you in Dentist Peak, and now Grail, and now James Bond 2000. I don't know, I mean, you just... Uh, I've always tried to have fun in what I do as an actor, and I've always felt that I have some little bit of versatility to go out there and try and explore and stand up and risk and you know Mars Attacks Tim Burton is someone who I really dig and someone who is you know unique on the landscape Richard Attenborough I mean he's been a magnificent actor for many years and he's created wonderful films so when you get the offer like that and you get a script which is so well founded like this one I mean it's uh, by William Nicholson who's a wonderful screenwriter and you can't help but say yes. I mean, when I started reading the script, I thought, what the heck is going on here? He wants me to be an Indian? This is crazy. But then, of course, as the story is revealed, uh, you find out the man was an Englishman. He was a fraud. He was a charlatan. He was whatever they label they put on him. So I saw pictures of Grey Owl, and you look like I do. Well, thank you. Thank you, hubby. Appreciate that. <laughs> So, let's talk about Montreal, your stay in Montreal. How long did you stay in Montreal for? I've been in, they're, they're calling you, I think, but might, might have to go up there and do a bit of acting. Okay. Yeah, off camera. Thank you, Pierre. Yeah. We need to move sh sharply to the left, okay? Okay, we need to move. Quiet, please. Same thing in the background. Turn over. Speed. 17. The hotel take one. Be quiet. Back on action. Yeah. 
hunter. They're trappers. They survive wild things. Do you think they become a better girl than a lion? I cannot, I cannot say. He's a wanderer. That's why I gave him his name, Washikuna. Real. He walks by name. They call him. Still out. Well, for you. Do you think you can tell a man about him? I cannot say. He's a wanderer, you know. That's why I gave him his name, Washakuna. Rayo. He walks by night. They call him fly by night. Thank you. There's one more like that. Go again, please. Come on, boy. 